We should learn more today about an allegation being leveled against Canada's spy agency. The BC Civil Liberties Association says CISA spied on peaceful protesters and Indigenous groups opposed to the Northern Gateway Pipeline. The group plans to publish what it calls a trove of heavily redacted CSIS documents today on a website called The Protest Papers. It shows the papers will show that CSIS was spying on environmentalists and sharing that information with the National Energy Board and the petroleum industry. The now defunct Northern Gateway Pipeline was officially quashed in late 2016. A court ruling was partially lifted, allowing the BC Civil Liberties Association to go public with the documents. With more on this, I'm joined by Phil Gursky this morning. He's a former CSIS agent, currently the president and CEO of Borealis Threat and Risk Consulting. He's with me on the line. Phil, good morning. I'm glad you could be with us to help us understand what was going on here. What kind of information is CSIS collecting on protest group? I, I guess my question is, how unusual is this? Well, it is and it isn't, Marcia. So I think what Canadians and your viewers have to understand is that CSIS acts as an early warning system for threat. So CSIS needs reasonable grounds to suspect there's a threat to national security or public safety. And that's the grounds upon which it does, does its investigation. So it gathers information, uh, gathers information, it, it sort of collects it, it assesses it, it determines if in fact a threat is there. Now, if that threat is in fact a serious one, like it's, it's straying into criminal grounds, then it can pass it on the RCMP for them to do their own, their own investigation into penalty of thesis. This is actually quite normal for a security service to do in that you want to determine as soon as possible if something may in fact be going down a violent pathway. And if it's not, then there's, there's no harm, no foul, and then nothing is actually done with the information. So how is CSIS going about collecting this kind of data? Were the protesters infiltrated? Were they watched from afar? Did they get personal information, Phil? How did they do it? It's hard to say, Marcy, without having the details. So normally, uh, CSIS has a number of tools in its, at its disposal. It can certainly recruit human sources to provide information on individual or individuals. Uh, in cases, it can apply for a, a warrant under Section 21 of the CSIS Act. It can go to a court and say, here's what we've learned so far about X, Y, or Z, and we need a warrant, an intercept warrant, to find out exactly what's happening here. So there's a number of tools that CSIS has, and every, every investigation will differ in terms of the tools that are being used to, to gather their information. What sort of privacy protection guidelines does CSIS need to adhere to when conducting this type of investigation? These investigations are lawful under the CSIS Act. The federal court warrants are approved by a judge. So in terms of privacy concerns, if, if the courts determine that there is reasonable grounds to suspect there's a possible threat to public safety or national security, CSIS has every legal tool to, do the, the, to fulfill its mandate as outlined in the CSIS Act, and it's been doing that for the past 35 years. So obviously a lot of people get prickly about the whole issue of privacy, but it sounds like, Phil, you're telling us that Canadians should feel good about this, that, that if there was any risk to the public, that CSIS was on it? Not surprising, Marcia. Given that I used to work with CSIS, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of, you know, spout the CSIS line. But I, I do think there's a problem here, and I think the problem is one of perception. I think that Canadians do, don't have a fuller understanding of what CSIS is and what it does. In all fairness, CSIS hasn't done the greatest job of explaining itself to Canadians. I, I mean... People aren't going to accept my assurance as a former CSIS guy, but all I want to say to your viewers and listeners is that CSIS does abide by the law. It has a mandate. It's clearly outlined what the mandate is. It has it has court approval to do what it does, and you know it, it, it is there to provide that as I said, early warning to to the Canadian government. I'm not sure if that's enough to satisfy people. That's the way it does does its work. That's what I witnessed in my 15 years at thesis. That, that's the best I can tell you right now. And last question then for you, Phil, that information that was gathered, what happens to it? Is it shared? CSIS has a mandate to share its information with the Government of Canada. So right in the CSIS Act, it says CSIS collects, analyzes, assesses, and advises the Government of Canada on threats to public safety or national security. So that's what the mandate says it says it is. There are, there are partners with whom CSIS works. Those are government partners for the most part. I'm not aware of any circumstance under which CSIS would be sharing information with private sector individuals or companies such as oil corporations. I'm not sure where that information is coming from. It certainly wasn't something that was 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 done when I was there, but I don't want to. I'm not speaking for the service. I'm speaking as a, a person who used to work there. But normally, it's governments with which with which uh, people or the people that CSIS shares with are government partners, not private sector partners. Phil Gursky, glad you could be with us today. Phil, thanks so much. Thanks, Marcia.